Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Risings, this is your March 2020 beginning of the month frequency grid outlook. We're going to talk about the full moon, which happens at 1937 of Virgo, but we have to discuss the energies that happen right before that day. There's about three days preceding that day, which is a time, as usual, full moons happen, an elevation of emotions. So we're gonna dip into this and go deep because we're gonna be talking about the sun, we're gonna be talking about Neptune, we're gonna be talking about illusions, we're gonna be talking about high levels of sensitivities. So let's dig in deep and talk about all astrology. All right, Neptune and the sun, they hook up in the beginning of March the most closely around March 7th, March 8th. This is gonna be important because you need to, you're gonna wanna understand what does that mean and where is this happening in your life if you are a Cancer Ascendant, Cancer Rising. So the planet Neptune is all about things being, appearing to be real even though they're not real. It's about the veil coming through the piercing of the veil occurring and all of a sudden things from the other side from the 5d realm slipping through and so we find out holy crap that's not really there that didn't really happen that wasn't really said that's not what i believe and this is key for you cancer ascendant cancer risings because this whole pisces energy and the whole mercury retrograde and neptune has been sitting in your ninth house of what do i believe it's been there for like eight years this is all astrology if you're new here put your birth digits in down below we'll hook you up if you have any questions just ask away and i usually because we're a small channel still i usually have time to cater to each individual subscribers the more you support us the more we support you. Neptune is illusions and delusions. Its job is to, to dissolve the 3D physical tangible world. All right. And right now I'm getting dissolved by all the sage. So Neptune, when the sun and the Neptune get together, the sun represents your vitality. The sun is you. It's how you express. It's how you radiate. The sun is how you shine. When Neptune comes along, Neptune and the sun, the sun d dissolves that, the, I'm sorry, Neptune dissolves the physical energy of the sun, which represents your physical energy, which means you may be more tired. You're at that time as well, your belief systems may seem even more delusional, may seem even more idealistic, more dreamlike. Also recognize some of the things that happen in the material world at that time. Things that happen to your body. Your body goes through levels of sensitivity, all right? There is also a less resistance to things such as physical stress. You also want to be careful of substances at this time. And I mentioned this because we have a full moon coming up a few days after this okay the full moon is an elevated time about emotions all right one of the things that neptune and the sun do together is they also elevate what you feel but not just about what you feel it gives you a stronger empathic ability you will at that time start having just a knowing about what others are feeling so this becomes tricky it becomes real tricky because if you aren't aware of that it's like is this what i'm feeling or is this what someone else is feeling and then it's if this is what somebody else is feeling which somebody else is feeling that right and this is this is really complicated right if you're a cancer ascendant cancer rising you understand what i'm talking about because in your fourth house in your third house i'm sorry you've got your virgo energy in your third house so your thinking is typically based on things that you can see logic rationale right uh, having things be organized and being able to look at the details. And at the same time, you then move on to your fifth house energy, which is where your Scorpio energy is at, which makes you really creative. So this could help at that time too, because our ninth house is where we talk to God, okay? And if you've got the, Nep the Pisces Neptune energy in your ninth house, this will open that realm up even more, particularly March 7th, March 8th, March 9th, all right? But recognize you're going to be having stronger emanations nations, greater streams of energy coming through that are definitely not yours. So you could be getting angelic beams coming through at this time, okay? Realizing this affects what you believe, your spirituality, your religion, you know, it's gonna be all about that, your higher learning. But recognize this is not a very long transit, although it's powerful. And it's not powerful in the sense that it's jolting, but it goes deep because it connects to what you're feeling because the full moon's coming just a day or two later. 
So let me give you some dates and let me give you some degrees so that we can better understand how to look at this realistically as a whole picture before the event comes so that when we're in the midst of the event, we can recognize it. All right. And we may actually not be able to recognize it while we're in the midst of it. It may take a day of delay, which is what my recommendation is. In other videos I had put out and I said, your moment of clarity because of this, this retrograde we have in Pisces with Mercury, the clarity moments come when Mercury starts going direct and she starts going direct on the 10th. Yes, I know everyone refers to Mercury as a he. No matter what I do, it's always coming through as a she for me. So I'm just, I'm going to stop fighting it because that's what I've been doing and I'm done fighting it. So Mercury at this time, she's flying, she's, she's happy. She went back and got the information in Aquarius that she needed where things happen very fast, like lightning and clear. So she's moving forward now. Okay. And this is before she hits the Piscean waters, which is key. That's why I recommend this small window of the 10th to the 14th, but recognize there is this other separate event that occurs and it's the full moon in Virgo at 19 degrees and 37 minutes. And that happens on the 10th of March. So we go through that whole sun conjunct Neptune in Pisces on the 7th and the 8th of March. We start feeling it depending upon our level of sensitivities, depending upon how sensitive you already are. Now, if you have Pisces, which you do, Cancer, Ascendant, Cancer, Risings in your ninth house, and if you're not sure, remember, just go down below and put your numbers in and I'll help you figure that out because it really depends on the degrees. That is what we're looking for. Some house systems are whole house systems where the sign fits perfectly right into that house and other systems don't do that. I use a tropical placidus system and it's by degrees. So we could have houses that are very small, some houses that are huge that have like two or even three signs within them. All right, so we're going by degrees degrees for added clarity because then that will help you go watch according to the videos that I'm giving because that's what I'm staring at as I'm talking, right? Doesn't make sense to look at a whole house unless you're really schooled with astrology and you understand how to convert then I wouldn't recommend that. But if this is what you're doing and if you do, if you are if you dig the way that I disperse the information, the way that I send it out, then fine, right? Then great. If this works for you. If not, then you'll find someone who links up more with your energy and and house system that they use. Understanding that the Neptune and the Pisces energy, Neptune and the sun, be careful of substances, all right? Your level of sensitivity with substances, the need for wanting to escape when the full moon happens right? So meaning if you normally have a glass of wine after dinner it, and, and, and you have to take pills because you're on medication, might not be a good mixture on this day, you know, specifically on the, um, I would say the eighth, ninth, you're going to be really susceptible that the resistance levels are going to, the sensitivities are just really heightened. And the, let's be honest, when you're feeling other things that folks are feeling, it might be a little overwhelming. It might be daunting. It may just be too much. And see, that's what happens though. You can't control this. It's a time of higher sensations coming in, higher emanations. What you can control is what you allow to come into your space. All right. If you do regular work with energy and you understand how to set up protective boundaries, knowing that you're a sensitive individual, then you can focus on that. You can set up energy fields around you that protect you. Meaning somebody's feeling down because this would not be good if you're around people who are negative, right? It could be too much. So you want to be aware of that, right? You want, you want to have an understanding that these are the possibilities and the inclinations of the time and how do you best prepare moving forward, right? Rationally, logically, as I say, strategically, how do we navigate these waters using the knowledge that's been given, okay, that's been handed down from all the great astronomers and astrologers, which at one time were exactly the same. Full moon time, the 10th of March. You've got Virgo down here at 1937. You've got the sun up here at 1937. Now the sun just came off of Neptune. All of it is still conjunct. The Neptune is at 18, 1823. So it's still within a one degree, two degree orb. It's still very much a factor here. For many people, this may give added, this may help the clarity, all right? Because that mo full moon, it was emotional down here and it's emotional up here, but having the sun on top of Neptune can help confirm what you feel someone's feeling. So in other words, if someone's feeding you a line of shit at that time, right? And it's, they say something and it bothers you and it, you get an, an emotional response with the full moon. 
having the sun and Neptune gives you a really good understanding of if they're legit or you know what I'm saying are they sincere or are they being devious in their in their in what they're saying in their assertions it can help however depending upon your chart see if you have planets at those degrees that I gave you and find out what planets they are and if you're not sure go ahead and ask and I'll help you to understand is it going to help you or is it going to hinder you hinder meaning will it add to the confusion okay hinder meaning will it um, you know make you more emotional right because anytime we have elevated emotions it's not good we want to wait a day and so that's the recommendation for this video to make sure that on the 10th you're not making a decision on that day right if there's actions that you have to take you want to wait because if you have elevated emotions on the 9th slash 10th because of the full moon stuff going on you want to wait till the emotions until everything lessens so if things aren't as hot and heightened and you want to be able to make clear rational choices Okay, so you want to do those things, wait a day. And it's, that's all it's going to take. That's all it's going to take. Because then when the moon and the sun start moving, the sun's going to go this way and the moon's going to go that way. They're going to begin to really separate. They're going to get away from Neptune very fast. You, you see what I'm saying? So you're not going to have to wait long. You'll still be able to have your clarity within the window. So more specifically, the 11th to the 14th. All right, small window. So I hope this has helped to put some light on your path.